Hello, I'm Sean Hewitt, uh, and I'm delighted to be reading uh, today for West Cork Literary Festival from my debut collection, uh, which is called Tongs of Fire, and is published with Jonathan Cape. Uh, I'm going to read three poems for you today, um, the first of which is called St John's Wort. Named for a man who carries his own head on a platter. For a day when the sun bears its light over the land so slowly, so measuredly, that the night crouches back and waits. A token of love, of patience, of the will to lift the mind outside oneself and let it rest, let it heal. Alone, I remembered this little herb the yellow spikes of the flower, frill of stamen, as something akin to happiness. Its bright stars, its tiny play at hope, its way of lifting through the grass. And I brought it to you, a light to illumine the dark caves of your eyes. At the door of the ward, being searched, the nurse took from me my gathering of flowers. I found you on the bed, staring, still in shock. Bringing no gift, I took your head in my empty hands like a world and held it. The second poem I'm going to read um, is called Vestige. Um, and this poem came from a line in one of Gerard Manley Hopkins' journals. Um, Hopkins noted down lots of things, um, what the skin on the top of his hot chocolate looked like, um, what water um, on a urinal looked like. Um, he was really detailed in his perception and really insightful um, but this one really struck struck me um, it's taken from the 12th of February 1870 and he wrote the slate slabs of the urinals even are frosted in graceful sprays vestige a sash window blooming with frost December morning, and ferns of it unfurling upwards. White feathers of ice, the ghost of a wing on the glass. From the bed, under heavy linen, we watched how slowly the structures of water unend themselves. Now, across the field, I see you crouching in rapture by the slate urinals, frosted in graceful sprays. Night, it seems, has fingered each effusion into a tree of white crystal. I hear your cry leap, then echo. Inside me, the water branches. The world rings like a glass, and my body rings in the world like a glass. The last poem I'd like to read for you is called Tree of Jesse, and it's long, long enough, um, but I hope you enjoy it. Tree of Jesse. Father, you would have loved that frenzy of wood, the sacred grove brought inside and carved as though the heritage of God was hidden in the branches all along. I remember stepping from the bright street into the church, the sun burning across my vision. 
and on the north aisle, in shadow, a body lying at the foot of a tree, baroque splendour of wood, the gilded vines curling roofwards, and on the branches twelve men like gaudy fruits blooming in the order of their lineage. The body clasped at the root, the tree lifting its blood in ropes through the trunk, feeding, and at the top the Christ child like the sun ringed in hammered gold in the arms of his mother. And now at your bedside that tree is a visitation. Instead of Jesse, it is you lying there, your body proliferating upwards, being reconstituted, broken down into growth. And I cannot unsee it, the corpse of my father, some message of guilt of my own living. For weeks now you have been a rhythmic, breathing body, hardly waking, chest like a bellows, inflating, deflating, mechanical, in and out, the trachea ribbed and prominent, pulling the air. For so long your breathing has lived beyond your body. I woke last night to imagine you were lying here in my room. Total stillness of the fields outside. At the window, the bronze gauze of the beech leaves pulsing in quiet shimmers. And me, bolt upright, startled to hear that constant, awful rattling as though the air itself was living. I called out from my bed, but what was I expecting? No reply. Some nights, the sun fierce at the window. I want to tell my father to burn, to go down. My forehead pressed to his forehead, his shallow breath in mine. But the moon in the heavens God has pitched a tent also for the moon, its ebbing shape slivering out and then sliding back into its bright circle, its restless life. Those who we love and who die become gods to us. Our speech from that moment is incantation. We are heard beyond the world. Now I think I can conjure you when I am alone. I ask you to place your hand on my shoulder to steer me through. This morning I sang to you as I carried the cup of tablets through the sunlit house like a celebrant. In your dream you told me I was riding my bike along the cinder path my headlight powering through the tunnel of trees. And I felt in that moment the privilege of being alive in your mind, to have been remade beyond myself and beamed out in the flickering room of your sleep. You are not leaving, I know, but shifting into image. My head already is haunted with you. I have become a living afterlife. All images return to you, the body at the root of my branching. And later, a silver birch in the churchyard, set apart from the mock orange, its blousy heads unpicking their blossom in the wind, almost a wedding two plots down from where you will be buried. The skin of it scarred with diamonds, catching 
at dawn the pink fire of the sun, and the body at its feet, the white roots moving towards it in the earth. May I always wake on that image, the eastern pyre, the bands of light and shadow ascending the trunk until the birch leaves flash, heaven silvered on the underside like a thousand doors, and know that a soul is passing through. Thank you very much.